after almost seven years together. Though we had photo albums filled with great times and we threw the best Mormon parties. <laughs> the realities of what we had really taken on were finally starting to set in. We were too afraid to admit the truth. We were in so deep. So we kept pretending. Pretending to be a perfect straight Mormon couple. It's exhausting. <laughs> But our hardships were nothing like what the early Mormon pioneers had to endure. I mean, grit was in our genes. My father used to say, who does the hard thing? He who can. Feel the pain and do it anyway. And the church had taught us from a very early age to deny the pain and smile anyway. If you chance to meet a frown, do not let it stay. Quickly turn it upside down and smile that frown away. <laughs> I believed the scripture in the Book of Mormon. And if men come unto me, I will show them their weakness. And if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. I was just weak. But I could be strong. So I, I broke all ties with that dirty blonde from California I met in New York, and I went shopping for the best possible reparative therapist. After interviewing in person with three local therapists, I decided to do phone therapy with the president of the National Association of Research and Therapy of Homosexuality, or NARTH. <sighs> I wanted to be NARTH's poster child. I liked his Brooklyn accent and his uh, gay jokes. I was willing to do or say whatever he wanted me to. The cure would only cost me the long distance phone bill and $135 for 45 minute session. It came down to pay for therapy or rent. My insurance and my physician father wouldn't cover it, so I finally broke down and I went to the bishop. i have been paying tithing and fast offerings my whole life. Could the church please help me to pay for this therapy to prevent me from turning gay and to keep my forever family together? He didn't know much at all about what I was dealing with, so I bought him books about the ex-gay movement to educate him, and well, he never asked how it was going, he just got the checks. I was seeing my Catholic phone therapist twice a week under the sound science of North. Under his direction, I wrote a letter to my mother, blaming her for my homosexuality. <laughs> I told her not only to stay out of my life, but my son's as well. I was afraid she was going to turn my son gay, too. I then joined Hope, an evangelical Christian ex-gay men support group in Massachusetts. All these married men sitting around overcoming their same-sex attraction together. <laughs> I never missed a meeting. <laughs> I'd watch ESPN with a straight salient male who was a football coach at UConn. I'd sit there and watch and watch and watch as I waited and waited and waited to turn straight. I joined a neo-pagan warrior community where I beat drums and I danced naked in the woods in Pennsylvania. They gave me my balls back and a new name, Buck. And I'd rub shoulders with my priesthood elders quorum on Sundays. Everything was financed by Mormon money, you see? It takes a village to make one straight. <laughs> I was on my way to heterosexual wholeness, so I flew to my closet and I threw anything out that might fit tightly or was pink or purple. I turned a blind queer eye and I stopped taking an interest in any activity or skill that had a gay association. I stopped working out so I wouldn't be attracted to men doing squats at the gym and I stopped watching the Lifetime channel. <laughs> <laughs> I started listening to Garth Brooks and George Strait instead of Ricky Martin or Bernadette Peters at Carnegie Hall. I uncrossed my legs and lowered my voice. Stephen became Steve. Right on. It's all good, dude. I was becoming this tightly coiled homophobic homosexual. <laughs> With no sense of humor. If anything, I was becoming asexual. They said this was my true self. But doesn't your true self smile? And shouldn't your true self find your stunning wife or any woman arousing? And why was I now having vivid homoerotic dreams? After all the time and money and energy, I still had to fantasize about a man to ejaculate while making love to my wife. That was our reality. The therapy wasn't helping. We both knew it, we didn't talk about it, we just pressed forward. And I took my temple marriage covenant seriously. Especially when I looked at our kids. I mean, we were a forever family, right? 
We did smile when we looked at them.